Did I say it was my birthday? <laughs> I thought this was off. Okay, we're gonna, we're gonna call Thank to you. order the regular city council meeting of April 8th, 2024. Madam Clerk, the roll please. Dixon? Here. Salvia? Here. Hauser? Here. Jones? Here. King? Here. Sage? Absent? Trent? Here. Thank you. Would you please rise and join us for the pledge? Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, everybody, for coming on this beautiful night. And it is Councilperson Jones's birthday, so happy birthday. <laughs> if you didn't know, happy, happy, happy birthday. birthday. <laughs> Can I ask how old? No. 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 Oh, oh. 29 again. That was a joke. Oh, and on the total eclipse of the sun. <laughs> wow. At the, 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 universe, the universe is on your side. It is on there my side. So, so tonight, um, just if, in case people have not heard, we had two members of our community who did a lot of things for our community pass away. Uh, Ed Kane passed away and uh, Gail Kimler passed away. Both did a had major contributions to our um, city, so I'd like to just have a moment of silence for them. Thank you. Thank you. And then also we have an announcement to make. It's not really an announcement, but um, as some people know that we, um, the city council took a long look at the school administration building and um, after careful consideration, um, we, are, we are not going to pursue, pursue that as a city. So I'd like to read the letter, and uh, the superintendent has been informed of this. And it said, at our recent goals and objective budget meeting, the Rochester City Council discussed the former school administration building on West University. After careful analysis and consideration, the council unanimously came to the conclusion that it would not be fiscally prudent for the city to take on a project of this size and scope. This project will require the city to invest millions of dollars in the building and require a significant increase in property taxes to our citizens. The council looked at all alternatives to the site and did not conclude that it made sense for the taxpayers of Rochester. The city council discussed the fact that like the school board, we find the best outcome for the future of the building would be to save the historic buildings. The City Council would be willing to consider supporting a conditional rezoning for the property, which would allow for a higher density residential component to be built into the project. The present R1 zoning classification would not allow for such a proposal. Again, our goal with this rezoning would be to allow the saving of this historic building. There are groups of investors considering ideas for saving the building, and we hope RCS will work with these groups to achieve our common goal of saving the building. We want to thank RCS for the opportunity to consider options to develop the building. We hope you understand our decision and certainly appreciate the opportunity you gave to us to investigate this very important historical building in our city. We look forward to working together into the future with RCS and potential developers to turn this site into a project that all of us will be proud as we look towards the future. So I just wanted to get that out. I don't know if any council people wanted to comment on that, um, but I think it came with careful consideration. And um, again, um, and uh, Council Member Jones, I, I want for her as well. I want to thank the school board um, and and uh, Dr. Silveri. They were great to us. All seven of the school board members supported us and were very kind. So we thank them for that. Okay. Yeah. Councilmember Trent. Yeah, I am excited that uh, we are asking them to make sure that they look at adaptive use um, for to, uh, and innovative ways to save that building. And I think it's a big opportunity instead of just tearing it down and putting in a subdivision. So I hope that truly and that is what I am for and hope that we will right. pursue that. I know we all are. I just and wanted to I think to we're willing reiterate. to work with the school board, mm -hmm. but we'll go forward from there. Yep. Yeah. thank you. 
Okay, next we have uh, public comment scheduled and non-scheduled. We have a presentation from Harmony Lloyd regarding the SMART update. So welcome to our council. Hi, thank Hi. you for having me. We have buses coming, I've we heard. We do. I saw a bus today. Is Did you? Possible? No, yeah. it's, it, it launches April 22nd. Yeah. It does. Yes, so thank you. Thank you, Councilwoman Trent, for inviting me. And for the Rochester City staff that we've been working with, they've been amazing and um, really helped us to bring everything together. So I was told I have five minutes, so I'm going to whip through this, okay? We, we will give you six or six, seven, six. come on. Okay, but including questions, <laughs> yes, right? Thank you. So just a quick overview, smart services, um, if you're not familiar with them, include the fixed route, which is the big buses and the one we're going to talk about tonight. Uh, connector service, which is those small buses, and I've already seen them around Rochester, so I know that you have that service. ADA paratransit, which will allow um, people that live within three quarters of a mile of the new fixed route to use the smaller buses where they will come to their home. So it's called curb to curb service, and it's designed to serve people that are unable to use the fixed route. The Community Partnership Program, uh, which uh, here you know as our partnership with OPC, SMART helps to fund that. And then we have FLEX, which is a pilot program right now. That is an on-demand service that uses an app to, um, for people to call on rides. That is in uh, five zones throughout Metro Detroit right now, but we're looking to expand it. And that would be most um, closely uh, compared to like an Uber or Lyft. So that's all SMART. So don't just think that SMART is only the big bus going down the road. We have a lot of things going on. This is the new route. Super exciting. Route 492. Uh, it will go from... Right. That is in... Uh, what happened? What? My voice eclipsed me. Yeah. <laughs> well, eclipsed. The ghost of Harmony Lloyd. Yes. <laughs> Past, future, present. Uh, um, it'll start at Oakland University or end at Oakland either way, um, and then go uh, across Walton and down Rochester Road through downtown Rochester. Uh, it will hit... Um, Squirrel, University, Walton, Rochester, Big Beaver, John R., Oakland Mall, Chicago, Maple, back on Rochester, Catalpa, and Washington, and then it will end at the State Fair Transit Center. So it'll make a lot of good connections. There's a lot of cross-town routes that go um, across 492, so people will be able to transfer easily, and then, of course, they can take it to our Royal Oak Transit Center where they can... Um, also get on a variety of roles. So it'll really connect them to uh, the entire community, all of Metro Detroit. We have some of the key destinations. You all are very familiar with all those, so I won't go through them. And then for your knowledge, um, bus stops are being installed. They were scheduled to start last week and the rain uh, did not um, hold off, so they will start this week. You should start to see some construction on um, on Rochester Road, and uh, we will not be putting shelters in until about a year into service because we like to see what uh, the ridership is at different stops. We don't put a shelter at every stop because it, it fiscally doesn't make sense. Um, so we watch where the high ridership places are and then we will come back and we will add additional amenities. A medium ridership stop would get a um, bench and then a higher ridership would get a shelter. I just wanted to point out um, that our new fixed route service is supplementing the amazing work that OPC does. We are not um, taking it over or taking the place of it. It provides a very important service and, and fills a, a key gap in service for the community. Uh, we drew this map just so you could visualize. Uh, the blue section is OPC's service area and then the route is highlighted there. And um, we just placed all of the medical facilities that are um, 
close, relatively close to the route, as just an example of how um, OPC and SMART could work together to um, connect people from uh, the OPC vehicle to the fixed route, and then that really opens up them to be able to go anywhere. So um, two different kinds of service, but both filling an important need. And then this one is, um, I just wanted you to visualize. On the left is what the, um, our route map looked like prior to the millage. And on the right, um, initially you look at it and you think it looks the same, but if you look at the pink routes that are highlighted, uh, there's one um, up across M59 going west that'll go into Waterford and White Lake Township, serve that area. A uh, little south of that, toward the bottom, you'll see uh, routes on Grand River and 12 Mile. Those have already been implemented last fall, and those um, serve Novi and Wixom for the first time. Uh, on Woodward, we've now connected Woodward fully so that Bloomfield Hills has service. And then you'll see in Rochester, and you can tell on the map from the left and to the right, where there's now a major connection so that people can travel um, from all of the Pontiac area and then connect down into um, southern Oakland County, but also to really connect to anywhere they want to go. And so it's really key that um, we've made these connections. I, I've heard many times, and I'm sure you have, that Metro Detroit or Detroit is not a public transportation town and that we have so much work to do, and this is how we do it, by um, one at a time making these connections and building kind of mobility services getting people used to the idea of buses. And so just um, to close, uh, if you think there's somebody in the community that we need to talk to, we're happy to. I've done a lot of these and have a lot more scheduled. Um, I encourage you to share information about the route uh, with employers especially. That's where we've received a huge amount of interest is um, employers that can, you know, share this with their employees and allow them to start using it to get to work. Any other stakeholders you have. So with that, I'll be happy to answer any questions. Councilmember Hauser. Sure. Thank you for coming and explaining this to me. I appreciate that. I've got two questions. One of them is more general. The other one is more, a little bit more specific. So I was looking at the schedule or the route there. Do you have any idea the time that it would take if I was to pick up one of these buses here in downtown Rochester and get to the Royal Oak Transit Center in downtown Royal Oak? Do you have an estimate as to how long that would take? Probably, I'm ballparking. That's okay. Yep. Okay, 40 minutes. 40 minutes. Mm -hmm. And do you know the cost per, per ride? Two dollars. Two bucks. Mm -hmm. Okay. And each way? Yes. Okay. And that's all I got. Thank you. Okay. Thanks. Councilmember Trent? Uh, yes, I, I heard you speak at the Rochester Regional Chamber Legislative Meeting at the Chief Financial, and that was really a wonderful presentation, so thank you for coming. Um, so I just want to, um, uh, ask, uh, to uh, I guess, inform or ask the city to do everything it can, and how do you promote this to let people know how to promote and communicate this to the residents? Because I want to do everything I can, and I know the city does, to make this successful, and the best way to do it is to get the uh, residents to, to know and people to know that this service is available and then maybe we can we will add it to our website I'm sure and we can add it to a newsletter um, as well but um, yeah. yeah and we will be kicking off a heavy marketing push over the next few weeks you'll start to see um, billboards and ads in a lot of places a lot on social media so um, you'll see that push over the next couple weeks yeah and I also I know that uh, Mayor Pro Tim Salvia is, uh, sits on the board of the o OPC Social Activity Center and um, we just uh, 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 we're getting an update from Renee Cothright the executive director and they've added um, seven more routes and um, have extended their geographical Reach to Troy, Sterling Heights, and Auburn Hills is my understanding because of this, uh, I feel, is a, is a wonderful uh, amount of money that has been budgeted for the uh, OBC transportation, which was sorely needed. So I'm just excited about this as well. And hopefully that I think there's more people out there than people realize that need this type of transportation. 
we've gotten public. a lot they're of called public <laughs> feedback. Oakland University students are very excited to yeah. start using it and come come to downtown. Yeah, it was, and that was the other thing. I thought now Oakland University can have this public transportation part of it, so it's not so much as commuter. So mm -hmm. you can, yeah, and that was. I hope that that will help help them grow as well. Mayor Pro Tem Sylvia. Thank you. So simple question. So if I'm a rider. How do I access this? Is there an app? Do they go to a website? How do they know where the routes are and how do they get that information? Um, they can always go to the SMART website, smartbus.org. Uh, we use, uh, it's um, either Google Transit or um, the tra it's called the Transit app, just a general name. I know it's confusing, that's its actual name. Um, and they, uh, they are a third party provider, but they seem to do the best with real time information. Mm -hmm. So once people download that app, they're able to put in where they want to go, um, and then it'll show them the routes and the exact time that the buses are coming. Okay, great. Or just Google Translate, Google Trans. Translate. Google Maps yeah, just... Google Maps, and then you hit the little bus icon instead yep. of the car. Yep. Amazing. That'll be great. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> when did you who knew that? was going to work for us. <laughs> I thought it was a placeholder. Yeah, so it worked in Japan. I know, trust but... me, I get it. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. Anything further? Thank you very much for coming tonight. Thank you so Thank you. much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, next we have an update on the Graham Farmers Market Expansion Project update and the DDA budget preview. Um, I know we're officially voting on the budget next meeting and have the budget presented. Um, but I did ask uh, the DDA, because there's been some changes and updates, I asked them to come in and give an update to uh, uh, to everybody. So welcome, Ben. Uh, good evening. Uh, thanks for the invite. Yes, we've been asked to come to the principal's office this evening for uh, <laughs> uh, to report out. No, but uh, no, the mayor, and, and rightly so, this is so, such a fast-moving project. He's like... People have questions. Can you guys come next Monday? Absolutely, for sure. Thank so you. that, and I wanted to make sure the building was still here after the eclipse today. So we're in good shape. Uh, I had sent a memo out uh, on my birthday last week, uh, my 60th, by the way. Uh, Whoa. Uh, Happy April birthday. Four, thank you. Um, uh, sort of getting everybody updated. I was already planning on doing that anyway. So hopefully that was informative. It kind of stands on its own. Uh, just wanted to sort of convey to you guys, uh, you know, where we're at, where the project's at. Uh, the only development that's happened since then is Christy, myself, Bob Bloomingdale, Roger, and Tony Lapuma are meeting with the architects on Wednesday at 10? 2, sorry. I knew it was on Wednesday. I just knew it was 10. So two days from now. So the plan is to meet with those guys, uh, get ready for our meeting on the 22nd for you, and that's going to be sort of the... Uh, the big uh, reveal, if you will, so we'll have the pretty pictures done and stuff like that. But uh, so from the cadence, as I put in my memos, we're trying to get everything sort of buttoned down uh, more better, as the kids say. Uh, uh, April 17th is our DDA meeting, so the intent is to go ahead and have the budget pretty much done, voted on, and then when we come before you guys on the 22nd, it should look largely like what I sent you. Uh, that's kind of directionally where we're headed. But my goal was, you know, let's make sure all right, we want to do this project. That's great. But we also have other responsibilities. Can we do both? The answer is yes, we can. Um, not an issue whatsoever. So um, there's going to be some, and I kind of alluded to it, there's going to be some housekeeping items. Our attorney had suggested that perhaps we, we amend the um, a development document, not the TIP, but it's a development plan, if you will, within the DDA district to just add this particular project by name. He said it's more housekeeping than anything else because it kind of refers to these things generically, but it would be helpful to, if we did that. So that will be part of the ask that we do on the 22nd for you guys. Um, but aside from that, really, um, just here to answer any questions. I mean, really, that's basically it. I've got no other updates than what was my memo. So, Okay, did you want to go into the... the the financing change. Uh, the financing change. From the land oh, contract. Uh, to sure, the... absolutely. Well, it was in the memo. Yeah. I just said everything's sort of okay. out there. All right, okay. so um, on, the 20 sec on the 21st, the last memo I sent you guys to give you an update, I sort of talked about that and also during our presentation said our attorney had pointed out that it was not, it was hard. It would just make it more complicated to do the combination of the properties if we do an existing land contract with the seller. So I, t I asked the seller if they would be fine with us financing, securing outside financing. Yep, no problem. So I uh, did that, had a, a, a DDA meeting. Um, they authorized me to go into negotiations with the lender, which we did, um, uh, several. And Anthony, uh, the director Maggio, was super helpful. He 
turned us on to a bunch of his connections, and we ended up getting several quotes back. And uh, as I said in my memo, we were able to secure financing at uh, just a tick under 5%, which was fantastic, given the fact that we had 7% before. So we were sale, able to sell about 12 to 5, I think, a year in interest, which is real money. It'll spend. Uh, so that was great. Uh, we filled out the paperwork last week for the loan document. So that's sort of in process. I haven't heard a peep on that just yet. Um, so like I said, everything's <coughs> in motion. I mean, right now it's just it's the sausage making part of sausage. So, uh, so we'll get through it. I'm sure there'll be some highs and some lows that we'll figure out. I know that our attorney said that the property still has a fair bit of titled hair on it. So we're working through that at the moment. So, but nothing that won't be ever overcome. Okay, we Thank will, you. Uh, continue to press on. Well, Mayor Pro Tem Selvia. Thank you. Um, I don't think I've been able to comment publicly on this since I was <coughs> missed uh, one oh, of the that's meetings. Oh, right. you were in Florida. Yeah. Um, but um, so I just wanted to say, you know, especially looking at the financials, you know, this project looks, you know, so much better than what we've seen in the past. Looks so, this looks great. I've kind of floated the concept to residents and just great feedback from everyone. Everyone is super excited about this. So the numbers look great. Concept is is improved and is a better win for the community. So just thank you for, you know, chugging through this and uh, all the hard work. Thank, thank you, you for pushing us. Uh, Council Member Trent. Well, you know, I have to say something. <laughs> I do want to thank you and the DDA board and all the hard work that it took to reimagine the farmer's market space after February 19th. So I'm excited about the Graham and so are many, many people that I talked to. And the potential of this new building and the, what a wonderful addition it will be to the downtown and the many opportunities it has for programming. And let's not forget the public bathrooms. <laughs> <laughs> However, it wouldn't be doing my job if I did not address the following, that it was brought up at our last special meeting at, yeah. The, based upon what your statement was in the letter, which I really think all the hard work that you must, I don't know how fast you type or how, <laughs> these are a lot of information that you have supplied us, so I truly appreciate it. But when you said that you were based upon being keenly aware of lessons learned for the first iteration of the architectural plans, I want to have a clear understanding, and I I do have to look a little backwards, a little side glance of saying the assurance of a solid framework to be established that early in this project, like next time the architect comes, that he gains a realistic um, understanding of the understanding of the expectations vis-a-vis -vis the budget so that there will be a clear plan to implement safeguards and checkpoints coupled with the assurance that with a I don't know, two and a half million, I'm not sure what the budget is. The architect will deliver plans that align with the budget that they have. They'll work that way. And I'd like to know what those safeguards are and what they plan to do differently so we aren't looking at a project that's almost triple of what it was initially. And that's my ask. Sure. Yeah, no, and it's a, it's a reasonable ask, of course. Um, two things. First of all, we haven't met with them yet. I understand. And so that's going to happen on Wednesday at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. So I'll make sure that's that I convey I that message that, uh, uh, believe me, nobody will be leaving the room after the first meeting without being acutely aware of uh, making sure that we're going to live within our means. So um, as I explained to you guys before, my intent is to stick with the budget that we have. And to the extent that it goes askew, uh, we're going to either have to phase it or just have to make some tough decisions. So, But uh, being here tonight, to tell you that the project is going to cost X, I, I don't have that for you. That's going to happen not, in two weeks. So. I'm not asking yeah, for no, that. No, understood. But I, you know what I'm asking for. It's right. not just a nod of the head, sure, we'll do this. They're going to say, hey, this is what we do when we get and something, something yeah. that's tangible. That's all. And sure. I know that they can do it. I trust these architects. I, I met them. I know that lessons learned. That's all. And then that's it. Okay. Um, Further questions, uh, Council Member Jones? I just, and I think you already mentioned this, but just because I think um, there was an issue with that deed and the confusion out mm -hmm. of everything. Yep. And I think that's kind of why she decided not to, for many reasons, but that being one, to proceed with her restaurant there. Uh, so I don't, I don't know if that's necessarily true. I mean, at least she didn't convey that to us. I think that he had done a, done a fair bit of work on it. but um, I think because it, it was taking clear. so long. Yeah, By the time she went to, yeah, to get financing, it had increased so much. But you feel very confident that whatever I, that problem is. No, there ain't no mountain high enough. We'll get through it, so it'll be fine. Okay. Oh, you know okay. what? There was one more thing. Sorry. But okay. you never know. There's always the, I don't know what I don't right. know, but I've been told by the people that are 
way smarter the than people me. that know they should be fine so. okay Oh, oh yes, question Yeah, I know that this probably wasn't real part of it, but it was in the letter of the parking fund discussion. Mm -hmm. um, and it looks like, I don't know, you said you're working with Anthony Maggio. You talked about layering in or running 325,000 per year commitment now of the DDA parking fund. Now, is that just to budget out yeah, in case so where, if it's 50,000, if it's half a million? Uh, I have no yeah, idea we don't what's know. gonna happen yeah, yeah. when. And I'm just saying that if we have, because understand how the TIF works. The, that mm -hmm. money has to be earmarked. We can't just collect it and I sit see. on it. You know what I'm saying? Got you. Oh. So it's gotta have a purpose. So, and part of my discussion is as we get down towards the tail end in 2030, you have to make a decision. In theory, the fund balance of the DDA should be zero if there's no intention to uh, to renew the TIF at that point in time. So you're going to have it. There's actually more money there than what has been set aside. I'm just saying that this is, you know, we're, we're trying to be crystal ball seven years down the road, but I can hardly make it to next week. Okay. Um, but uh, I'm just sh I'm telling you that I, 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 I have to look at it over the long term. Mm -hmm. And to do this project, to do the parking, mm -hmm. and to do uh, streets, we're going to be fine. Okay. I, That's I, the way it looks. I, Anything could happen, but um, as I'm saying right now, I can't imagine a, a scenario where we would ever not be able to do that. That's unless I, property values just plummeted and we'll have bigger fish to fry. Right. right. So, so, but that was what that, ever that was what I was seeing. You had to earmark it. So, okay. yeah, yeah. All I right. think we use what Anthony like a three year, three percent a year increase in yep. uh, SEV. So. Okay. Just wanted to yep. confirm. Well, thank Try you so much for yeah. yeah, yeah. No, thanks so for yeah, that. Yeah. Councilmember King. I just have one question, not necessarily specific to the project, which I really do like what you guys have come up with. I think it'll be a much better um, solution. But just can you help me understand, we've been going through budgeting and we've been talking about our fund balance and the general fund policy. Yeah. What is, like, can you help me understand the DDA's fund balance and how you guys view that? Do you have a policy around what level, you know, you try to maintain mm -hmm. there? Yeah, so the DDA TIF works a little bit differently. There's, the fund balance has to be earmarked for development within the, within the district. So if it's sort of unencumbered fund balance, you're supposed to flip it back to whoever the, you know, so a portion will go back to the city and to the different, you know, county and, and the different collectors. But what we've done is we've earmarked um, uh, physical improvement projects in the district, you know, streets and, and parking. So whereas the city has a fund balance, has to maintain a certain dollar amount, the DDA is kind of a little bit more of a gray area. Um, so it's not the same. There is no formal policy as far as I know that we ever voted on. When I was on council, we certainly have one for the city, but um, I don't think you actually can have one for the DEA because you you're not supposed to have a fund balance. You're not supposed you to have money, yeah. Right. And we don't, because like I said, it's all earmarked for infrastructure projects, so just to be clear. So each year that, that one you know, million dollar balance is earmarked. Correct, that's what I'm saying, because by the time the TIF ends, it's gonna have to be spent within the district on something. So we've got seven years to figure that out, right? But you know, I, I, who knows what's going to happen between now and, and 2030, right? So, um, yeah, okay. I don't know if that was helpful or not, but I feel like I didn't answer your question, so I apologize for that. But it's kind of the, the TIF works differently than the city does. Thanks, yeah. Councilmember House. If I may, just to follow up on Councilperson King's question. So let's just say hypothetically, there's a half a million dollars that's left over for the DDA at the end of the year. Mm -hmm. The idea is, is DDA is going to spend that internally on the city versus otherwise you'd have to correct give it back. Yeah, so theory, it makes yeah, it, yeah, yeah okay, right. and that's yeah. I so it's it. like a rolling total, and yep. you know, like we were saving before, we had a million three saved for the first iteration of the project. COVID came, fund balance gone, but it was all sort of spent on that. So it's just you know, so I, I would say th in thinking ahead, if you and I don't know who's going to be on council in 2030, but hopefully you guys all will be will be like walking in. <laughs> Uh, but uh, at that point, um, you know, we'll have to, whoever's on the DDA at that particular time is, you know, first of all, we'll get some indication of what the, the temperature of council is as to whether or not the, uh, um, would it be extended or not, which of course we hope it would, but you never know. Um, to the extent that it's not, then we're going to have to, a budget will be submitted, which will in effect drain the fund balance last year. That would be sort of the way I would approach it. Very good. Any further questions? Mm -hmm. I'd just like to say also, I like the enthusiasm unknown to mankind. I did that for you, Stuart. That's the only reason. I, you were the only one that I knew would appreciate well, it. Well, so. yeah. no, because sure everybody Jeff, else is Michigan State. I'm so sure I mean, Jeff appreciated yeah. it, too. <laughs> All right, any further questions? No. Mm -hmm. no Thank right, you cool. for coming. So we'll see you guys on the 22nd. Uh, it's going to be long, so I apologize. It'll be much more than five minutes. And then lastly, really quick, I just saw that they're redoing Walton all the way from OU, basically, to um, Helen Street. 
Mm-hmm. And it's going to be throughout the entire summer, starting next week and going down the end of August. So. Oh, that's great. That's yeah, nice. thank you, know, you for awesome. that. Thanks, never mind. Yeah, so as she's doing her bus presentation, I'm like, oh, that's, I hate to throw a monkey wrench into your works, but the main artery is going to be tore up. So. Good timing. Thanks, guys. Appreciate thank it. You. Thanks. Um, Brian, is there anybody up there? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. There are no public comments. Okay, thank you. And I just, uh, I, I was remiss, I just wanted to say um, we have uh, uh, our city treasurer, Anthony Maggio, uh, sitting in for our city manager tonight. So, Anthony, thank you for being here. You're welcome. <laughs> okay, and on to the quarterly financial report. Any comments while Anthony's here? <laughs> no. Okay, if not, we are not going to have approval of the minutes tonight. We're going to move on to the approval of the consent agenda. And the consent agenda is consideration to approve the Art and Apples Festival. Uh, Councilmember Trent. I will make a motion to approve the Art and Apples Festival. Motion by Councilmember Trent. <laughs> Second. Support by Councilmember King. Madam Clerk, the roll, please. Vixen. Yes. Salvia. Yes. Hauser. Yes. Jones. Yes. King. Yes. Trent. Yes. Thank you. I think that was a pretty easy vote. Um, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> next, there are no old business or table items. There's not a public hearing, legislative deliberation, reports, and regular business. First, a consideration of a resolution to amend the Act 51 roadmap to MDOT by... Oh, I, I, I'm sorry. I thought I asked if anybody had any questions. Oh, I thought he was going to have... Oh, you have a presentation? Yeah. Or I'm sorry. a motion. Either. Oh, because okay. <laughs> we do have a Anthony Maggio. So yes. Uh, back to. Uh, I had to find the presentation. Back right to now. quarterly financial report. Sorry, you were on a. We don't want to miss this. Yeah, I'm yeah. telling you, like it's Thursday. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I'm not denying that. Moving through. <laughs> I'm trying to help a person out. Okay, out. okay, yeah. it's a birthday. Okay, got it. He's on one side of the. I will make <laughs> this. Uh, I will make this brief as usual. So we have a few <laughs> items uh, for the review. And consideration, we do. Uh, I am looking for a motion to do two things. Uh, the list of the amendments is here. Uh, the first is changing both the current fiscal year and the next three years uh, due to the wrap up of the March board review and getting much closer, still not final, but much closer values um, uh, for real property. Uh, spoiler alert, we now have reached uh, the $1 billion threshold on taxable value, uh, so we have now just, uh, just squeaked by on that one. So the, the first one is to amend that. Uh, as council and residents are aware, we always keep the budget live and up to date whenever we get new facts and new information. We put that into the budget for the th whatever term it's for. In this case, it's uh, current year and rolling forward. Uh, so we want to make sure that, that we highlight that. The second part in there is uh, there's no change at all nets to zero, uh, but we're rebalancing the general fund. So we'll have the presentation, obviously, at the next council meeting for the budget uh, uh, adoption. But as we're here now, I thought it, uh, we're already making some amendments, and it'll help in the final numbers to get these in there ahead of time. On the, uh, we'll just go right to that page. And what we're talking about is this section right here on the fund balance policy. So we've made a lot uh, from our goals and objectives discussion, which, like I said, the presentation will be the next meeting, incorporated the items into the various funds. So now we're just looking to rebalance them. We've done, this will be the third rebalancing. It, usually is just every few years or so, and it depends on the cash flow, the needs, which projects end up coming forward or which got canceled. Uh, and so we have the money just going to where it needs to to keep all the funds within the policy uh, limits on that. So, Mayor, I can get more detailed on any items that Council would like. There's uh, nothing overall to note. One of the large items, interest rates continue to hold. Um, at this time, we're still around 5.4%. Uh, and as we look into the future um, with all of, and what we kind of do is look at what um, every week the banks send out the rates. So we get rates every week from 
I don't know, 12 to 16 different banks that the city is affiliated with. And we kind of look to see what are the banks doing with rates uh, on for their investments on just CDs. That is as basic as that gets. So as we look at it, this is always the current that we're getting on just the pooled accounts. And then these rates here are related to what the roughly what the banks are giving as we go out. So as you can see, they're starting to trend down, obviously. There's been lots of talk about that. Um, uh, the question is when, and of course, there's no crystal ball for that. So, um, but everything else is looking in good shape. Any of the variances that are over the percents or under are just related to timing um, on payments. So when we look at things, it's just when we're actually having the payments come in. Everything is, is within what the original uh, proposed projects uh, were budgeted for. So that's what I have for that one. Mayor Pro Tem Sylvia. Thank you. Thank you, um, Finance Director Maggio. So to summarize, so all good news in terms of positive revenue increases for 24, 25, 26, 27. Correct. And then really just moving money from general fund to a dedicated fund, reallocating. Correct, so that's, yes. That's the budget amendment requests. Correct. Great. So with that, I would make a motion to approve the budget amendments as presented. Motion by the Mayor Pro Tem. I'll support. Support by Council Member Trent. Discussion? Madam Clerk, the roll, please. Vixen? Yes. Salvia? Yes. Hauser? Yes. Jones? Yes. King? Yes. Trent? Yes. Thank you, Council. Thank you. Next is a consideration of a resolution to amend Act 51 Roadmap through MDOT by decertification of a section of North Wilcox and a section of Romeo Road. Mr. DPW Director, welcome. Yes, I'm Mayor, City Council, City Manager Maggio. Nice up there. <laughs> 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 See you at staff tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> Next time I'll wear a tie. <laughs> <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, so every year the city has to certify our Act 51 map with MDOT. This is our map that's recorded with the state, showing all of our local and major roads. Um, so in this upcoming one, we have to correct some inaccuracies. Um, so those two are in the memo presented before you. The first one is in that section of North Wilcox Road where the public works facility is. Um, so since we've added the gates, it's kind of no longer a public road. Um, so we would need to decertify approximately 220 feet of that section of road. And the second section is section of Romeo Road um, that no longer exists. It is now a trail that leads from Stony Creek Boulevard <laughs> Um, north up to the museum. Um, hmm. so that's about 720 feet. Um, so what's asked tonight is for council to approve a resolution formally decertifying these roads. Um, so I can include that with a couple of forms that I need to submit to MDOT to, yes. Mayor Pro Tem Sylvia. Thank you. So this section of Romeo Road is, is my walking path. So my question is, um, never knew this was considered Romeo Road, who maintains this walking path? It's a nice wide cement path that goes from Stony Point Boulevard to the museum. Who maintains that? We do. We do. We plow it. We, we salt it. it. We mow. We, um, if we had to replace the concrete, we would replace the concrete. Mm -hmm. All right. the way up to that bridge there. Okay. All right. So I've never seen that in any of like our parks master plan or like when we look at the paths here in this part of the park. So, you know, obviously I agree with recertifying the map because this is not a road you can't drive your car down it but um, we should include that in our updates for parks master plan um, and then what about the bridge there is the bridge us or is the bridge Rochester Hills That's ours. okay so did this we that used to be a vehicular bridge and um, obviously it's not anymore it's just a pedestrian bridge um, that we actually added some wooden barricades to uh, recently uh, because trucks really aren't supposed to be driving on it. They can in the middle section. So we have utility trucks, you know, DTE consumers, whatever, go down there. Um, but yes, that, that is our bridge. That okay, because I, well, my second question was about those wooden structures. My understanding is that was done so that they could only drive to the bridge, not across it? They can drive across it, but it was to make sure that they stay in the middle of the bridge. In the not, middle. You know, the okay, and then what about when we did bridge um, maintenance? Did we? Is that our bridge? Did we review it? 
Yes, yeah, so that, that gets inspected. Okay. Yeah. Council Member Hauser? The section where Council Person Salvia is talking about, that was done like 20 years ago though, right? Yeah, because I remember when I moved here, that was a dirt road and you could right. drive through there. Yeah, so, okay, so that's the section that we're talking about. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Council Member Jones? So then I'm just curious, so, like why now is that changing? Yeah. If it's been that way for a while, it just wasn't caught before or? No real Apparently, reason. Yeah, I wasn't here when that happened, but yeah, <laughs> we're, it's a change that needs to be made now. Well, thank you for doing that then, yeah. for correcting it, making it as it should be. So, yes. Do we have a motion? Yeah. Yeah. I have a motion, yeah. yeah. So a motion to approve the um, revision to the roadmap to delineate that North Wilcox Street is no longer part of that public work, and more importantly, that that section of Romeo Road is no longer part of the uh, city roads. And one last thing, um, this is the, our mileage on this map is what dictates how much money we receive from the state. So technically that amount would go down. I mean, we've got around 43 miles total of roads, so 720 plus 220, you know, it's not a whole lot, but technically it is. Um, Understood. Be about a quarter mile almost. Yeah. Yeah. Support. Motion by Council Member Hauser, support by Mayor Pro Tem Salvia. Discussion? Madam Clerk, the roll, please. Vixen? Yes. Salvia? Yes. Hauser? Yes. Jones? Yes. King? Yes. Trent? Yes. Thank you. Now we have a receipt of the check register report, which is what I thought I was talking about before. <laughs> if there's any questions for <laughs> Mr. Maggio? He's throwing if, you off tonight. If not, it's not that hard, probably. Right? <laughs> uh, next, we receive a report from the various boards and commission. Uh, we will not have the historical commission report tonight. Uh, report on the DDA special meeting of March 28th, 2024. Yes. Council Member Trent. And I believe you were. Was, yes, was. you were. So we didn't talk about a whole lot, but the two things we spoke about were very important, which they, uh, uh, um, Ben Giovanelli, the chairman of the board of the DDA here earlier spoke to, was that we chose an architect. Um, well, they chose an architect. I'm a liaison. And the board did. And um, out of two, and they chose an the architect that had worked on the previous iteration of this project. And then we went into closed session, and then we chose the lender. So that's pretty much it. Any questions? <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, it was actually a very short meeting as well. Uh, next is a report from the Planning Commission. Councilmember Hauser. Sure. Okay, so we had our meeting on April 1st. Uh, there were three topics that we discussed. One was the uh, public hearing for the facade change for Oak Street Design located at 114 West 3rd Street. They've come to Planning Commission. They want to do a very nice update and um, upgrade, frankly, to the uh, facade. So we had a discussion about that. That was passed. Um, we also had a discussion about consideration uh, for payment in lieu of parking for 105 East 2nd Street. Uh, that is the former tattoo parlor next to Chomp that is going to take over that space and expand, so we agreed that that would be permitted. And then more importantly, uh, the third topic for discussion was a follow-up on the short-term rental conversation that was with City Council at our last meeting. And for people in the audience or for people watching at home, um, the last City Council meeting, there's a very, very um, engaging discussion about short-term rentals, or otherwise known as Airbnbs or VRBOs. And the city has, put together a proposed ordinance that was taken up for consideration discussion at the last planning commission meeting on April 1st. And it was my impression, and Mr. Mayor, please correct me if I'm wrong, but the planning commission seemed to be aligned with the members of city council as to where short-term rentals would be permitted, but more importantly, where they would not be permitted. And more importantly, that would be uh, permissible in the central business district and the area downtown where commercial business activities are taking place. They would not be permitted in residential. So R1, R2, 3, 4, 5, RT, and then also in RM1 and RM2, which would be your condos and apartments. So it, I got the understand, or got the impression that Planning Commission was very much aligned with the comments that City Council had made about restricting uh, short-term rentals solely to uh, commercial uh, areas. So that motion was passed. It was set uh, for public hearing, which will take place at the Planning Commission meeting on May 6, 2024. If, in fact, it is um, passed there, it would then go to City Council shortly thereafter because there's a zoning change. 
um, I believe that would be the protocol uh, from a procedural standpoint. Um, well, I think I think it would have. Did I say that correctly? I, I'm not sure it's a zoning change. It would be. I thought of is it ordinance change. It's ordinance well, change. I wouldn't watch the video. Uh, so, have you watched yeah. have you watch the video? <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm sorry. Go ahead, please. I want happy, to be happy to clarify. The reason yeah. it's at Planning Commission <clears throat> is because there's going to be a proposed ordinance uh, amendment to the zoning ordinance. Zoning. Okay, I'm so, sorry. Yes. Both. Okay, so gotcha. it would change the zoning code to put in those um, permitted uses as short-term rentals in the those different areas. That's the reason it's at Planning Commission now. And to get feedback if they had uh, comments on the the ordinance, the the code ordinance itself. So, both of those, uh, assuming that the public hearing is held on in, at the May six, and everything moves forward, their requested action would be to move it the, the ordinance to this body, and city council then would consider both the zoning code code amendment and the regular code amendment. Thank you, Mr. City Attorney. And so, to be clear, for anyone listening at home or watching in the audience. The next hearing on this issue would be May 6th at the Planning Commission where there will be a uh, public hearing for members of the public to come and talk about their comments or their views or their opinions on this proposed ordinance regarding short-term rentals. And that was it, Mayor. Yeah, and then I think then if, then it will come to the first city council meeting in May, and then if we choose to, then we would set a public hearing. Yes. And I think that's 30 yep. days. Is it 30 days? It would be 15, but that ends up being 30 because of the timing. Right. So, so in theory, early June. Yeah, mid -June, you know, mid mid June, or right. like July, even. And I think the the comment was is if things go according to Hoyle and we do this as quickly as efficiently as possible, there may in fact be a, a ordinance on the books on or before July 1st on the short term rental issue. Uh, Mayor Pro Tem Selvia. Yes, so thank you for clarifying the timing. And I guess my ask for administration is as we're looking at um, Chief C. Slick, as we're working with any, you don't need to come up, but as, as we're working with any of these current short term rentals, um, you know, obviously nothing is, is approved until there's all the votes have taken place. But if we could just communicate that we, this is being discussed and there could be a change because some of these current rentals are booking things right. and making contracts. So if we could just start communicating that it is being discussed, there are public hearings happening, something could change in the near term. I'm gonna defer a little bit uh, to the city attorney because I don't know how quite to answer your uh, question because we really have not officially been told other than we know of two or three um, because of their continuous uh, re-registration. So clearly, uh, Mayor Pro Tem, there are other ones out there that are operating that we do not know about because they're doing it below the table in and in sense. So as much as I agree with you, we'll do our best, mm -hmm. but that is a potential problem, and maybe I'll yeah. refer to Attorney Crot to comment. Yeah, that, that's that's right. I mean, if those that are complying with what we deem to be short-term rentals, I've, there's just a couple of them that are, are doing it uh, properly mm -hmm. at this point. So I don't see a reason why at some point, uh, maybe when it comes back to this body, um, but we can let them know it's in, in progress. Um, but so I think that would probably be the limit that we would want to, to have that notice. So in theory, if this passed, and somebody had bookings through October. What happens? W would our, could they say, well, they signed the contract before we did our ordinance, or is our ordinance Trump? Uh, Happy to respond in a, in, a, in a city council communication. Thank you. Mm -hmm. the, the one thing I would like to do, Mr. Mayor, is just to kind of give you a, an update, as you recalled. We had some residents who were very emotional about what went on. Um, I had a chance to speak to uh, several of them uh, before they left, reminded them that I needed their eyes to let us know when people were changing. I did get a note from uh, the one person on Lysander the next day about the change of, uh, of, of the rental status. When we looked at our system, that person, the property owner, had not followed the process. Mm -hmm. And so uh, we wrote a citation for that, and we're waiting for a court date. Good. <clears throat> Thank you. Councilmember Jones. Um, this might come up more when it comes in front of city council or when there's a public hearing, but I just wondered in the discussion, did you 
um, come up with a plan. So not everybody is obviously three people are following the process right now. But if you go on the VRBO website, we can find where they are in Rochester. Is there a plan to pursue anything? As far as you know, you know, 527th Street is running. It's on VRBO. It's against if it passes the ordinance. I just, I know we haven't gotten there yet, but have you put thought into how that would be handled? Is it a citation or, you know? So we, did, we just had a slight discussion about that at the Planning Commission. Um, in my mind, the best way that we're going to be able to do this is going to be by complaint based. In other words, mm -hmm. the neighbors will go ahead and see what's going on. As much time as myself and the other, uh, as John, my fire marshal, spends driving around many of the things that we just don't know, and that would be change of occupancy and some of that. So uh, I would uh, go ahead, and unless the attorney Kraut has a different idea, is that we would probably continue to make this complaint based enforcement. Okay, thank you. Other questions? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Warren. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, next, a report from the Sister City Committee. Councilmember Trent. Uh, yes. Um, well, we have different um, executive directors of um, and directors come and speak to us. And this last time, we had Renee Cothright, the executive director of the OPC. Um, Social Activity Center, and basically it was a lot about transportation uh, because the um, transportation millage has increased by $2 million yearly. Um, they have extended their service time to 8.30 p.m. and starting at, starting at 6.30 a.m. They, they went from 13 to 20 routes. They've expanded their geographical reach to Troy, Sterling Heights, and Auburn Hills. They have equivalent of, uh, they said, 13 and a half time miles around the earth. 13 and a half times around the earth in mileage. They've had a 30% increase of trips since 2023, and they've also had a 30% increased participation in all their other activities from 2023 to 2024. They've delivered 102,523 uh, 523 meals in 2023, and they also have a lot of wonderful activities that she spoke about. So she go to the website if you're over 50 and see what they have to offer. Um, so. Um, continue, we are continued to work with the Rochester Regional Chamber Foundation on the joint uh, city uh, with Rochester Hills and the city of Rochester on the Memorial Day Parade. So it's coming up quicker than you think. That's it. Very good. Thank you. Next is a report from the Principal Shopping District, Councilmember Jones. Um, yes. Um, let me get to that. A um, couple of quick updates. We obviously discussed some of the things that were discussed um, tonight. Um, with the DDA, and then we uh, talked about deck art. Uh, last Friday was the last day to uh, sign up for that. Uh, five nine to five ten are the actual. It's the event night. Um, it's quite a process that they manage to get take them in, organize them, tag them, and then place them in the stores. Um, the uh, May fourth is the first day of uh, the farmers market and they are give out 500 bags and $25 will be $25 certificate will be in 25 of the bags they're just doing something a little different this year um, they she was kind enough to say that if Raya wanted to put in uh, information because we are doing a pancake breakfast that day um, she'd be happy to put our flyer on so that was really nice and the makers market is going to be on June 22nd I think those are the highlights very good. Uh, next, on to public comment. I actually have one thing. Um, for some reason, Raya is never listed for a committee report. So I wonder if that could be changed. So what you need to do is make sure that administration gets, gets the agenda. Cut. Okay. And then because we, we did our cycle. Because I had I had a similar situation. Okay. So I'll send the agendas. Okay. Because we did have a meeting since our last. Um, so can I speak of it? Even though I I'm think not you on may. It. Okay. It's your birthday, right? <laughs> I, it's my birthday. I get to talk about whatever I want. Exactly. That's right. Um, so we have a couple things coming up. Um, we did have a um, a successful event on health and safety. It was a summit that we did with RCS. It was at Adams High School. It was extremely infor informative. Um, it's our second year of doing it. John James surprised us and he stopped by, which I thought was really nice. And um, so that was the success. We have Amy Dramer, who on um, April 11th is going to do at the public library. 
um, an event on harmful teen behavior. So she's going to talk about vaping, etc. And then on May 2nd, we have a water and boating safety event that we also are doing at the public library. And then, as I mentioned, we have the pancake breakfast that's going to be the opening day of the farmer's market. And I think that's it. Very Thank good. you. Thank you. Uh, next on to public comment, uh, Brian, any? Thank you. There are none. Okay. Anybody in the audience like to public comment? Come on up and identify yourself where you live. Welcome. Thank you, Mary Bixon. Uh, my name is Rich Power. I live in the city of Rochester on Hemlock in the Great Oaks subdivision. And uh, my question is, does anyone know if there's any plans to repave the Paint Creek Trail? It's getting pretty worn down. And um, I don't... I want to say I don't think there's any plan to pave that trail. They've they've kept they want to keep it non. If I may, yeah. Richard, you mean repave it, meaning pavement, or put new crushed limestone on there? With new crushed limestone. Okay. Right. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. I, I think there is a plan to do that. Yeah, uh, I think I think we are discussing, um, right. you know, what types of surfaces and when to do it right. and how to do it and um, and you know and I know in the spring it tends to get a little muddier and ruddier, but um, yeah, we are we are talking about it's that. It's kind of been bad for a while, and really the whole trail, at least up to Gun Road, really needs it too. And, yeah, um, and I, think the, I think the trailway, and Council Member Sage is our representative, yep. but I think there's been talk about redoing the whole the whole trail okay. and having each city, each municipality, um, you know, prorate and pay for that. And if we could put a lot of thought into the softest lime we can get, because some is harder than others, and some seems to become like concrete oh, more readily good to than know. others. So yeah. Okay. Some more housing. Mr. Power, nice to see you. Do you have Mr. Sage's email address? Yeah. yeah. What I would suggest is you send him an email with these concerns and some comments, and I know he'll get back to you because he's the representative for the uh, trailways, okay? Yeah, because the other issue I have is that there's uh, quite a, a water problem out on the trail right up by this new bathroom, and if we could get some help getting that fixed, it would be real nice, because it becomes a problem all winter and really all season, all year long, and it's since that new bathroom's gone in. Oh, yeah. okay. It's a perennial issue over there. Right, yeah. but it, it seems like it could somehow be fixed, because it really is only about a 200 feet long, 150 feet long. That's good to know. Very good, yeah. thank you. Nice to see you. We, we do love our trail. Yeah, we do. Um, this, Councilmember King. I just have I have a miscellaneous um, comment uh, going to the trails. I, do we have plans for any more of those of the lighted crosswalks throughout town? You know where you press the button and. Uh, Mr. Maggio. Yes. Uh, so when we looked at it before, uh, we just had four spots identified as being high traffic and hazard areas with potential issues with visibility and setbacks on whether it was trees or signs or walls or buildings and all that. So right now, all the ones identified have been completed. So if there's any others of concerns, we can look at all of them, but there's no other ones uh, pending right now. Okay, I've just gotten, I've gotten some feedback with the design of them, which doesn't help the ones that are already in, but if we're thinking about future ones, um, especially like at the, the trailhead, um, the signpost that holds the, you know, the sign, it's also where you go to push the button. It's right at the road. So if you have a child who's mm -hmm. approaching on a bike, you're sending them, you know, right up to the road to go hit the button. Mm -hmm. They go out a little too far, you, you know, that's potential mm -hmm. danger. So it would have been nice, you know, like you think about the crosswalks downtown, right? They're all set back away from the road. Unfortunately, these were designed where they're at the road. Mm -hmm. So it would have been nice thing. to have them set back a little bit or even if the button was further back. So if I understand you, you would want to like six feet ahead. Right. So, right you know, when, and I think sidewalk. people, yes. from what I've seen too, people aren't necessarily pushing it because they're already at the road. Right there. The cars yes. are either stopping or they're, you know, it's kind of like The button almost late. needs to be like 10 feet in front. So you hit it and then it goes on. So there's like a little bit of a delay. So that's, but is that what you're? Yeah. Yeah. Or yeah, you we'll just, people stop yeah. Yeah. for the rack. Probably not worth taking them out, moving them back. But if we're thinking about new ones, I think the design of that could be a little bit better to, for, to be safer. Very good. Got it. Uh, miscellaneous, Mr. Maggio, anything tonight? Nothing, Mayor, thank you. Uh, 
Um, Madam Clerk? I have a couple of items, Your Honor. Um, first, the Memorial Day um, at Mount Avon. Uh, Maggie Belvitz is going to make a presentation at the next council meeting regarding the parade. I just wanted to give you a couple of highlights with us. I didn't hear that I needed to make any changes from last year's event, so um, we're starting at 8 a.m. Um, Poet Laureate uh, Robert Lytle has already agreed to um, read a poem for us. Um, we're still looking for our guest speaker. Um, I have one more lead, but the gentleman that you sent me, Mayor, he never responded back to me. Okay. So we're still looking at it. I'm hoping that the Arbor Day, maybe, when we're, you're inviting vets over there, that if you're over there, that you could uh, try to wrangle one. Um, Maggie has secured the Rochester Adams High School marching band for us. Yes. Um, our event will be followed by the parade going from us down to um, Veterans Point in Rochester Hills. Their event will start at 1030 to allow time between the two events and the parade. And then we have a new, um, new item and Fire Chief has offered um, hot dogs at uh, the fire um, station after the parade, so about 1130. So um, Maggie will have more and I'll keep you posted on the speaker. My second item is looking at the calendar far ahead into election season. I see that um, the second meeting in October is scheduled um, on the week that we're going to have early voting going on in here. So we have, there's, this is going to be an ongoing um, issue every November. So there, there's, three, there's three potential ways we could change it. We could change it to the week before. We could check with Chief and maybe move it over to the fire station. Or if council is open to it, I, I, I've been getting out of here about 5.30 as far as that day goes. If council doesn't mind, we could move the poll booths back against the wall, put the chairs out. It would look a bit more cluttered than it always, but I think we could still use this room um, for that meeting if you don't mind it still being somewhat set up for, for um, the voting. So something to think about. Obviously, we don't need to make, make a decision um, tonight or even in the next couple of months, but that's going to need, need to um, be looked at. And going forward, what you, what you want to do. Councilmember Housing. Do you have a preference? Um, I, I think with CMN, um, it's difficult. You know, that's a lot of work for them to move over there. It's a lot of work to displace this. Um, maybe, um, if, if anything, maybe changing the time to 7.30 so that we have a little bit of extra wiggle room. Um, I, I think leaving it in this room would be perfectly fine if, if council doesn't mind seeing the voting booth set up and, and just move some tables around. I think, I think we can accommodate that. that. Yeah. yeah. I think we're good with yeah. that. And then, uh, yeah, so that would. Mm -hmm. Okay. We'll, we'll move forward with that then. And um, that's all I have. Thank okay, you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. City Attorney? Uh, nothing. Thank you. Council Member King? Um, just one thing that I did notice that there would be a meeting typically on, I think, September 2nd. With holidays, do we have a meeting on Labor Day for City Council? Or no? It's uh, always yeah. the next day after. Okay. Same with um, Memorial Day. Memorial Day. Day. I was, that was my question. Is scheduled okay. for Memorial Day. That was the other one. Day Thank day you. After. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Mayor Pro Tem Sylvia. Uh, thank you. So on this uh, solar eclipse day, so mm -hmm. just wanted to give uh, council a little bit of an update, you know, after our budget meeting and our head nod regarding the community house, um, they are working on finalizing the drawings. They will be done the end of May um, and continuing to have discussions with the SEAL, our engineering staff, and um, some more details to come, but um, they are, are working, working, working. So, and um, that is all. We're good. Councilmember Jones. Um, just two quick things. Um, we are, uh, I'm working with Frank Rewald on the Lions Park. I'm sort of very excited about that whole thing. We're going to give it a facelift. Um, he came up with an idea that was maybe a little bit too robust for <laughs> what we were thinking. So we're going to bring it down a little bit, but I'm super excited. I met with Alec and, and kind of brought him in the loop so he knows what's going on since it's a park. So I'm excited about that, hoping that we can get that done by the end of the summer. Um, and then um, to tag onto what Nancy said, since it looks like we hopefully, with uh, the voting on the budget, will move forward on the skate park. So um, he's just looking at different designers to come up with some financial plans. So that's exciting. Good. 
Good. Council Member Trent? I have nothing. <laughs> Council Member Hauser? Nada. Just very briefly, I want to thank the Chief Cieslak for addressing some ordinance issues that I had for some blight. He did a very good job, and I saw that the uh, issue that I had brought up has been remedied. I've got a few more, I'm sorry to say, but Damn. we'll go through them. And, and, <laughs> and it's one of those things that our standards are quite high. They need to be, and I think that they're there for a reason. So I'll work with you, Chief. So thank you very much. I appreciate that. Good. Thank you. Uh, I just have two quick things. First, again, uh, May 20th is the State of the City. And I am oh, that's right. I'm going to assume that um, something about the community house and the skateboard park will be, that's a great um, idea. Will be talked about. Um, and then also I want to thank the DPW for having the tennis court. That's uh -huh. <laughs> so it is truly spring and summer. So without further ado, meeting adjourned. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. <laughs>